Hello everyone, welcome to live. We're getting ready to record Homegirls. Episode six. Six, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I checked a few times. So. <laughs> I'm gas and gas lines and gas appliances. We're just trying to make sure you can, we will be seen and heard properly. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get start with the video. Yes. 84 years ago this week, an explosion at a school in East Texas killed hundreds, mostly children. But it led to change that we still see today. Here's the backstory with Bob Buckaloo. The 1930s in East Texas. Despite the Great Depression, money was flowing from the oil fields. Little towns like New London near Tyler were prosperous. The community built a new school to educate grades 5 through 12, said to be one of the most modern in Texas. To provide heat and winter, school officials saved taxpayers $300 a month to pipe in natural gas from the oil fields. It was a tragic mistake. At 3.17 in the afternoon of March 18, 1937, the school building exploded. A young Associated Press reporter named Walter Cronkite covered the story. He would later write, two minutes before classes were to be dismissed for the weekend, a student in the basement woodworking shop switched off a bandsaw. The spark did its work. Workers from the oil fields rushed in to help pull victims from the tangled mass of shattered steel and concrete. But for many of the students and teachers, nothing could be done. 294 died. Oh my God. Yes, 294 people dead. Is this not a story of capitalism run rampant? To save money, they piped in natural gas straight from the oil field. Jesus, it's to a school. Oh. Did you see the pipe in that picture? Mm -hmm. You'll see it on the YouTube video. It's just like yeah. this flimsy thing sitting in a field it does not look very reliable <laughs> no not at all and then when someone turned on the bandsaw which is a very 1937 thing to say when is the last time a bandsaw has been turned yeah. on in a high school <laughs> um it caused a spark that blew the whole thing up mm -hmm. because of because uh, of the natural gas yes yes which <laughs> by the way is our topic for today yes. gas lines and gas appliances now that's a very unfortunate example of what happens Very um true. thankfully <laughs> this isn't going to be one of those where we try to scare you yeah there's been a few of those yeah but it, this is not like carbon isn't. monoxide yes it's going to get better from here maybe maybe kind of yeah yeah so i'm mary and i'm Missy, and we're the home girls and today obviously we're talking about gas lines and gas appliances it does sound like kind of a random topic mm -hmm. but they are crazy important when they come when it comes to our lives and our personal safety yeah did you know that natural gas provides one fifth of all the energy in the United States? I did not. Yeah. I did not know that. It's especially important in homes where it supplies nearly half of all energy used for cooking, heating, and for fueling other types of appliances like um, your water heater, yeah. HVAC system, etc. Uh, but lately, gas has become a hot button issue because it used to be considered eco friendly. Yeah, and now it's not. It's not. Yeah. yeah. Now oh, not. how times have changed. I mean, this is like in the last three years. Mm -hmm. I, I always bought, looked for places with gas because I thought I was being more oh, really? environmentally friendly. Yeah. I thought, well, electric. Um, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. So how did gas go from eco hero to equal zero? Ooh. Oh, <laughs> let me say that again. I said, it. how did gas go from eco hero to equal zero? I see it. I did it again. Let's try one more time. How did gas go from eco hero to eco zero? I did it Ooh. that time. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's find out. So I think we talked about this before. As you can imagine, gas starts with uh, the the Romans. Yeah, the Greeks. Or the Greeks. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Some someone we constantly return yeah. to. Um. I. But I think we've talked about her before when we talked about carbon monoxide, about the Oracle at Delphi who could like see the future. I think so. And like one of the ways she was seeing the future was she was inhaling oh, yes, the gas yes, yes. fumes. Holy. I remember this. Can you imagine how dizzy that woman was? Yeah, she was just She really probably high. not did not have one day <laughs> when she wasn't dizzy because they were living around yeah. the natural gas leak. So the Oracle at Delphi, we see her actually in even Greek mythology. She's 
very important person in Greece, in ancient Greece. Um, and Delphi is still a place. You can go visit oh, it. I don't know wow. if you can do whippets. Yeah, like uh, probably the, not. Probably not. <laughs> but um, it is still a place. You can actually go see where that temple was. It was a woman. She was called the Oracle at Delphi. Obviously, there's multiple, probably because they all died of this was like their title yes right. yeah, yes okay. they were like the high priestess yeah. okay um they probably all died of some sort of gas related exposure probably. <laughs> uh, oh my god right so um <laughs> we're talking about how hundreds thousands of years bce right the, so we yes. have multiple oracles at delphi the temple on, on Delphi was built where natural gas seeped from the ground in a flame. So it actually was combusting. Oh, wow. Yeah. Legend has it that a goat herd discovered burning natural gas seeping on the slopes of Mount Parnassus in Greece. This was deemed a miraculous gift of the gods and a temple was established. Um, and the priestess would tell the future by inhaling the fumes. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, it's really dark, but really funny. Yeah. If you think about it now, it's like, so she just got really high off got, natural gas. <laughs> Sis was getting high AF. But if you think about it, if you were just walking along with your goats and there was fire coming out of the ground, you would be like, hey. Magic. <laughs> yeah, there's something going on around here. Um, around 500 BC, the Chinese started using crude bamboo pipelines to transport gas that seeped to the surface and use it to boil seawater to drink, get drinkable water. We talked about this mm -hmm. for the wells. Yeah. Um, but the first commercialized natural gas is about 1785, which is way earlier than I would have assumed, yeah. actually. No, yeah. It's the British that are using natural gas produced from coal, uh, fracking or not fracking mining to light mm -hmm. houses and streets like the gas lights mm -hmm. they had on the streets in 1816 baltimore baltimore maryland used this type of manufactured natural gas to become the first city of the united states to light its streets with gas so great mm -hmm. britain was quite a bit ahead of us there yeah um so 1785 in great britain 1816 in baltimore maryland so you just use it to light up the lights outside. yes okay. yes the gas lights um which i'm sure was a huge deal yeah and actually this is something i know back from my college days crime went down because oh, it used to be light it's effect. light yeah it used to be if you were walking home especially well women only special women went out at night back then yeah. but if men were walking home from clubs or bars they were often accosted at night because it was dark, so dark. someone could easily wow. jump out at you in fact you could hire lantern men to light your way or you would have a servant holding a lantern mm -hmm. now suddenly it's um to them i'm sure it would have been illuminated like daylight to us gaslight is very weak but to them if you can yeah, imagine they're so used to the dark yeah they're so, so used to the dark i'm sure gaslight felt insanely like bright <laughs> yeah that's crazy yeah i know so let's talk about the united states a bit because we're really the ones that kind of revolutionized oil and gas mm -hmm. right so in the united states the properties of natural gas were discovered by native americans who would ignite the gases that seeped into and around lake erie which is in ohio mm -hmm. french explorers witnessed this practice around 1626 so pretty early on the native americans are actually using gas as a light source in 1821, William Hart dug the first successful natural gas well in the United States in Fredonia, New York. And eventually, um, he formed the first natural gas light company, which was called the Fredonia Gas Light Company. Nice. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Went on the note, a little on the nose there. In 1836, the city of Philadelphia created the first municipally owned gas distribution company. And today, U.S. public gas systems number more than 900, and the Philadelphia Gas uh, Works is still the largest and longest operating public gas company in the United States. Wow. Congratulations They've to kept Philly. It up. They've yeah. kept it up. Um, city of brotherly love there, but not really. <laughs> uh, I was listening to the Behind the Bastards, and he was calling Dallas the city of hate. And he was like, no, that was actually their motto for a long time. Oh, my God. I don't think it was, but it made me laugh. Sorry, digression. <laughs> I was like, that's kind of true, though. I can see that. Um, sorry, Dallas, but not yeah, sorry. Yeah, Houston and Dallas have beef, so. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Uh, so during most of the 19th century, natural gas was used almost exclusively as a source of light. But in 1885, um, oh, did it? No, we're good. I, oh, we're I good. don't know okay. why Facebook decided to. Um, in 1885, it. Robert Bunsen invented. Do you know what Robert Bunsen invented? The, the Bunsen burner. Yes. Uh, yes. 
Yes. Uh, it, we gonna... all are intimately aware, been victimized. Yeah. That's because I think that's just engraved in my brain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like we have all Bunsen been, all we've like, all oh. been personally victimized by a Bunsen burner. Okay. Those things do not light. They don't. No, like your chem teacher would be like, it's easy. You just go, and then you'd be like, do it a thousand times. That thing would never light. Mm -hmm. Drives me up the wall. When I was actually a chem lab assistant in high school, and one of my jobs was to light the Bunsen burners. So I did ultimately get kind of good at it, but I was never like, because you know, the teachers are just like, like, like super quick. Yep. So wealthy Victorians loved natural gas. Um, It was really a status symbol to have natural gas put in your home. And this is before electricity. So in the 19th century, you see a wide range use of natural gas, especially natural gas chandeliers. And because natural gas was expensive, they were often mixed chandeliers. So you would see a mixture of candles and natural gas. Interesting. Is Uh, that a bad combination? (laughs) I'm like, is that not a fire and yes. gas? What? Yes. <laughs> I am surprised more homes didn't explode in the Victorian era. Oh, my God. Um, and ultimately, um, as we get to the later 19th century, you'll see a mix of electric and gas chandeliers, which is even, like, yes. just as dangerous, yeah, honestly. Just as <laughs> really just as dangerous. Um, in 1938, the U.S. government began regulating natural gas. So it's not, we don't actually get regulation until 1938. That's uh, a long time. Yeah, you know, it, it it's around for a pretty long time before the government actually steps yeah, in. You said like 1700s ish or probably Well, like not in the United like 18, States, 1816. 18, yeah. So it takes over a, about oh, just over 100 years, right? That's a lot. Over 100 years, that's yeah. A, that's a lot. Um, so that 1838 act is called the Natural Gas Act. It gave the Federal Power Commission authority to permit construction and set just and reasonable rates for the transmission or sale of natural gas in interstate commerce. Meanwhile, production, collection, and sales priced and uh, on the consumer's end were exempt from the law. So um, basically, they protected the companies in that one. Oh. Of course. Of course. I don't think anyone's like surprised. Always. Yeah. <laughs> um, because I will tell you, natural gas is not affordable right now. It's expensive. Everything is expensive. Yes. Expensive and we're right getting now. we're getting double hit because Greg Abbott said they could charge us more for their mistake with the freeze. Yeah. So we're just going to leave that on the table because my natural gas bill used to be 25 bucks a month no matter what. And now it's, and now like it's it can be like over 100 bucks sometimes. Oh, my yeah. God. Do you have to pay natural gas or is that rolled up? No, I don't have to, yeah. thankfully. I just put water in, in my electric bill. And electricity is not cheap Oh, right my now. God. It's electricity horrible. is so expensive. Uh, yeah, I actually had ended up changing to like a, a fixed plan because like it just keeps going up and up. Yeah, like, yeah. Those, like, those monthly plans. Mm-hmm. I think we've talked about this before, but if you're not yeah. from Texas... We have to um, buy our energy direct from energy companies. We don't yes. have like monopolized energy, which is supposed to save us money, which is all just a big capitalist lie. Yeah, it just keeps going. This out. is an episode, mm-hmm. an anti capitalist mm-hmm. episode. <laughs> I, I'm not going to apologize for that. No, yeah, it's bad. Like, it's bad. Um, so in 1954, everyone's favorite court, the Supreme Court, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, ruled that producers selling natural gas into interstate pipelines were natural gas companies and thus fell under the regulatory responsibility of the FPC. So suddenly the FPC um, faced treating every producer from big companies to small operators as an individual public utility. Um This leads to more and more regulation. It's kind of how we get these consolidated companies that we have now. Um, In Houston specifically, we are all beholden to Centerpoint Energy. Centerpoint. Which is not, I mean, you love to hate them. You love love to hate them. them. Yeah, it's crazy. We got our our electricity and then we got to pay extra. Yeah. (laughs) To Centerpoint. (laughs) Somehow our, you know, it's it's interesting though because your energy and your natural gas kind of overlap. Mm Mm-hmm. Your energy consumption, your natu- natural gas consumption really go hand in hand, yeah. especially if you have gas appliances. So it's interesting that they're two different companies yeah, um, or multiple companies if you're in Texas. So between 1992 and 1998, natural gas consumption rose by 17 percent, driven in part by lower prices and expanding economy and construction. Pipeline expansion uh, was one of the major factors contributing to price decline, bringing more gas up from the Gulf of Mexico and down from Canada into the northeastern U.S. and upper Midwest. You know, every once in a while, there'll be those um, those like so-and-so pipelines 
like, oh, we don't want that pipeline because it's going to pollute everybody. Yeah. That's what they're talking about. They're talking about like natural gas and oil oh. pipelines. Yeah. They're good and bad. Um, pipelines are good because they make us who live in Houston a lot of money. Of course. Pipelines are bad because they're very, very bad for the environment. Yes. And they're bad for the people whose property they're on because they can leak and they can hurt your livestock and stuff like that. However, I'll say this. If the federal government ever knocks on your door and asks to put a pipeline through your um, property, some people some people get a lump sum, but some people get dividends every month from that. Oh, they get money. Oh, yeah. And it is sweet, sweet oil Ooh. money. It is. I mean, I know... Um, <laughs> a family friend of a family friend of ours actually is involved in that oh, and they really? make they make boku bucks oh my boku God. bucks i'm so. intrigued <laughs> like, i want it i want some <laughs> now as i mentioned there is in the modern age only in the last five to ten years have become we become aware that natural gas might not be as eco-friendly as, as we thought, we thought it was. yeah and the big part of this is do you know where electricity came from originally mm -mm. coal Oh, from coal. Okay. Uh, coal is very dirty. It's very dirty on the human side. It's very dirty on the, you know, pollution side. And it, but it's very clean on the money side. You of know, course. there's money to be made. But um, the thing with coal is it's a high human toll on all the way around. It's bad for the people who mine it. It's bad for the people who breathe it in. It's bad for the environment. And then, therefore, it's going to kill all of us, right? Um, in the past decades... I'd say the last 20 years, we've increased our reliance on solar, wind, and water. Mm -hmm. If you're in Norway, steam. Steam? Yes, wow. because they're a volcano. Not not just Norway, but like Iceland, oh, a lot of those Nordic countries, because they cool. have like natural hot yeah. steam. Um, so we've switched our electrical sources from being very, very dirty to very, very clean. Now, when you think about that... Um, it made sense why gas was considered cleaner because it actually was when we were using coal. Yeah, yeah. So gas so. was cleaner when we were Compared using Compared to coal. what we were using before, it yes. was uh, cleaner. Yes. But now that we have transitioned to clean energy, renewable energies, through electricity, gas doesn't make now sense Now gas anymore. is the one that's like, yes. you got to go. How things change, right? Mm-hmm. So a uh, couple cities and states are actually making moves to eliminate gas completely. Wow. Most famously is New York City. Now, New York City is starting a natural gas ban, and that's going to take effect in December of 2023 for buildings under seven stories and in 2027 for buildings greater than seven stories. Wow. That's still a while, but I guess they need time to... Uh transition <laughs> yeah they, well you know in new york and philadelphia is actually a great example every once in a while you'll have whole city blocks that just blow up because of like oh, a gas really? wow. leak yeah you've never heard of that before mm -hmm. it happens probably more often than it should so you know from a public safety standpoint it actually makes a lot of sense yeah. getting rid of gas too save lives and we'll also talk about this later i don't know if you're going to talk about this in your section but in my section i'll talk about some of the health issues that they recently oh, discovered no, the no, gas. No. so yeah you got that okay <laughs> Um, so yeah, New York is taking the big step in actually banning natural gas from all appliances. So there'll be no more gas fireplaces, no more gas stoves, um, no more water heaters, HVAC systems and gas. It's, it's wow. a pretty big deal. They're moving all to renewable, clean energy. And this is good news. I hope other places kind of follow. follow. Along. Yeah. yeah, it's a double-edged sword, right? So much of this economy in here in Houston relies on... Oil and gas. Oil and gas. But at the same time, we do need a change. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thankfully, we have the med medical center, right? That's true. <laughs> we, have we have the have medical, medical center. <laughs> and we have the, all the chemical companies. But yeah. yeah. And it'll be interesting to see how that changes that's over scary. time. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. Well, that's, that's, I said it wasn't be bleak. That was a little bleak. It was bleaker than I intended. Yeah. Not as bleak compared to like other episodes. Yeah, so for sure. And obviously, there's always a lot more history, but that was just like the yeah, no, the that, glossy. I, I like that. I like yeah. it. It was, it was yes. good. All right. Okay. Hand it over to you. So I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons. <laughs> <laughs> I love pros and cons. Um. So what is gas piping? So gas piping is a piping system in your house, and that's what's used to carry the natural gas from the supply directly to like whatever appliance or system you know in your house. Um, so, of course, there are pros and cons. Yes. <laughs> so I'll talk about the pros first. Um, 
First pro that I, I found was that it's cheaper than electric. Yeah, actually, that is a really good point. If you are running appliances, yeah. I we were just complaining about our bills. In here is when we're not being double charged yeah, for if gas. You're just like on one, okay. not on both. Yeah, so like if, if you're, you're on gas and in a normal electric, yeah, yeah, in a normal year, it, you do save money. Yeah, yeah. So natural gas is always cheaper than electric, particularly in the long run. While it may not be cost effective to switch from electric to gas or vice versa, um, if you don't already have a gas line, choosing all natural gas appliances can save you up to thirty percent on your monthly utility bills. Um, if you want to add gas lines, it can be very expensive, and gas appliances are more expensive than electric appliances, like up front, like when you're. Buying they are. Them. There's there's more that you need to yeah. hook them up. Mm -hmm. But supposedly, you know, it pays for itself over time because it's more of a savings, like in the long run, overall. I yeah, guess. take that with a grain of salt, right? Yeah. Um, another one is that they're energy efficient. Some gas appliances, particularly dryers, are often chosen specifically for their energy efficiency. Uh, this goes hand in hand with like your utility bills. The less energy your appliances use to get the job done, the more efficient they are. Um, so yeah, if people are looking to improve your home's energy efficiency, then gas appliances is, is a good option. So actually, let, let's do some definitions real quick. Gas lines refer to the piping that carries mm -hmm. gas from the exterior of the home to the interior. Yeah. And, but they also can refer to the lines running through the house. Okay. And a gas appliance is any appliance that uses Use gas. gas. Yeah. yeah. So like your stove or your dryer. Water heater, yeah, your HVAC. HVAC. I don't know what else. I feel like. I have it in my notes. If yeah. there's another, I feel like we got them there's all. Probably, there might be more, but yeah. those are like the main ones for sure. Um, but yeah, another one, which this one was just a random one. Apparently cooking, it's better to cook with like gas. It's, it's, it is, it heats your food faster. Yeah, it heats up your food faster. Um, this is not even like a really important advantage. I guess if you're like a chef, you know. Like. No, I've noticed that. So when I moved from DC to Texas, yeah. in DC, everything is gas because it's an older city. Mm -hmm. But a lot of apartments in Houston are electric. electric. Yeah, mine's so, electric. Yeah. yeah, so our, our, we only lived in one apartment here. We lived in League City. That was electric. And I was like, how am I supposed to cook on this? It takes like two hours mm -hmm. to boil water. You like wait a while. Yes. Like, and even heating up the oven. Oh my God. Yes. It took forever. Yeah. It's not like, yeah, it's much faster. Yes. I uh, mean, I've always gas preferred appliances. gas, but of course now yeah, I know. And, it, and apparently it's easier to maintain too, like your gas stove. Well, I don't know, but that stove. would, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Well, yeah, I guess you don't have the coils. You don't yeah, have to worry about. You have to like take out all the yeah. stuff. Yeah. You got to clean it. It's annoying, <laughs> but yeah. And then another one was that natural gas is easy to, oh, it's easy to, to use natural gas in your home. So because natural gas has been used in American homes for over a century, um, every contractor and construction company knows how to outfit a house with natural gas. I mean, hypothetically, Supposedly, hypothetically. Yeah. I, I have noticed is, though, but. um, I don't know this year because of all the supply shortages, we've had a lot of houses, new builds that were originally wired for gas. And then the, um, contractors have, or the builders have flipped them to electric just to meet the deadlines oh. because it's so it faster or well, it's easier to, if you don't have to run the lines and oh. get the inspectors out there, oh, that's going to save, save you time. Weeks. Yeah. So there yeah. were a few housing developments where they were originally gas and flipped them to electric just to make the deadlines. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. And then um, cons. I feel like there's the con is very <laughs> yeah. obvious. So one of the only negatives to choosing gas appliances is that natural gas is dangerously flammable and can cause carbon monoxide poisoning. It which can. We talked about carbon monoxide poisoning yes. before. We had a whole episode about it. Yes. It was very brutal. <laughs> Feel free to go back and listen to that. That is one of those scary episodes. Yeah. We are there to scare you in that. Yeah, that, that is a scary, a scary episode. But anyways, however, gas leaks should be a big concern if the appliance appliances and gas lines are installed properly like yes. everything that we talked yes. about um and of course if you have like a carbon monoxide detector like it should be fine but. yes and uh, so big thing to remember is a gas leak is different than a carbon monoxide mm -hmm. leak so with gas leak you're gonna have you you should smell it yeah you you'll be able to smell it and sure. a lot of times it's like dizziness disorientation uh vomiting nausea very quickly yeah. whereas with carbon monoxide is more slow and you don't really know what's wrong with you until it's too late. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that, yeah. And there's Carbon no monoxide smell. is scary. Yeah. It's, it's, it's odorless. It is odorless. 
And then the last thing is apparently gas lines need maintenance. So yes. <laughs> gas lines do require cleaning. Um, while many individuals view natural gas or propane as a gas form, there can be buildup over time that needs to be addressed. Heavy buildup can result in a limited amount of gas being transported to appliances like your stove, heater, dryer, or water heater. And... Well, there there are ways to prevent that. Oh, really? It's called sediment traps, and oh, we, we will talk about okay, that. Okay, cool. Yeah. But yeah, so that's everything I got. Yay! Nice and simple. Nice and simple. Yeah. So We're the not... main thing is, um, it's very flammable. Yes, and it is very flammable, as we know now. And but. yes, and bad, and now bad for the environment. Now it was not bad for the environment. Yeah. Isn't that? I, it just blows my mind on that flip flop for yeah. so long. It makes you wonder, like. In like 50 years, what's going to be different? Like, what are we going to be wrong about? <laughs> I mean, gas was like the eco-friendly alternative for ever. Mm-hmm. I mean, I never knew any other way. And yeah. now I'm, I am so confused. Dude, I feel guilty because I have a gas, you know, I have two <laughs> gas houses. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, because the stove here is gas. Yeah, I don't, I mean, do I feel guilty? about? Oh, your dryer is gas. Too. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, another appliance. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about gas more in the modern home. Yes. And we're going to start with the anatomy, the anatomy of a gas line or in, in, the, in the home, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Not commercial, only in the home here. Yes. Uh, first, you have the supply line, which is the gas piping inside the house. Then you have the branch line, which is the gas line that runs to each individual appliance. Okay. So supply line takes it in and then it branches off into each individual appliance. A drop line is where a branch line terminates. So vertical pipe dropping down to the gas appliance from the branch line, that can be a drop line. Or it can also be called a riser if it carries gas up the branch line. That's kind of confusing, but yeah. Um, It makes more sense if you see a picture. So Google that. Now, uh, the sediment trap. Sediment trap can be called uh, dirt pocket or drip leg too, but what I always heard it referred to as a sediment trap. And that's kind of what you were just talking about there. So there are particles in gas that we can't see, just Mm -hmm. like there's particles in the air that we can't see. Our eyes are just not good enough for that. So those little tiny particles will build up over time in your gas line and can cause clogs and can slow the flow of gas down, et cetera, et cetera. So we have something in our house is called sediment traps, and it's there to catch water because you can get... um, water particles in your gas oh. too which makes i mean makes yeah sense. Makes sense. it can catch water or form materials that may be in the gas and it prevents these materials from entering into the gas appliance so you do want your sediment trap to be clean and working and that is something we call out often that people need to clean out their yeah. sediment trap or replace their sediment trap or that it's clogged etc it needs to be at least three inches and it has to be sloping downwards because it operates on gravity Oh, well, pretty yeah, basic. Con- it's kind of yeah. like the drain line on your. Um, it's going to go down. Yeah. <laughs> the drain line on your um, HVAC system or your water heater. Yeah. For like the, the, the water. You, it operates on gravity. Yeah. So let's talk about more about the piping here. Piping upstream and downstream. An upstream pipe on your gas meter. So this is your gas piping outside. Okay. Um, and you, you know what a gas meter is, right? Mm-hmm. That's where the gas guy reads Um, yeah Yeah. and they turn it on yeah turn it on a lot of times it's and they like shoot it to get your bill and a lot of it's automated now you don't really have gas men anymore um so on the outside of your house the upstream pipe on the gas meter is where the gas comes in and it's the responsibility of the gas company the downstream pipe on the gas meter is how gas and how gas gas enters the home and it's responsibility of the homeowner So the upstream pipe is the responsibility of the gas company. The downstream pipe is your responsibility. Have you ever gotten, I don't know if you've gotten because you live in an apartment, but there's this scary letter that Centerpoint sends out that says, these gas lines are your responsibility. And if something happens to them, you could be like $40,000 in the hole. Have you seen those? I haven't. So they say you can buy this gas line insurance and you pay extra on your bill every month and we'll cover it. Total scam. Don't do it. Don't do it. Even though it's from Centerpoint, it's garbage. If you're in Texas and you, you heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't fall for it. Don't fall for that. What are these pipes made out of? Gas line pipes. They can be made out of steel, copper, brass, black iron, black steel, galvanized mm. steel. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> uh, actually, it's fine because remember what's upsetting the galvanized piping is water. Is water. Yeah, yeah. So gas is not that bad. But, oh. but what it's still like. I mean, like in Houston, like yeah, so that's humid. what I was about to say. Like, in the heat and humidity, yeah. it can still get some wear and tear. Yeah. yeah. 
But then, of course, there's CSST, corrugated stainless steel mm-hmm. tubing, and plastic PVC. Now, were you in the last meeting when we talked about CSST? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember why it's bad? I don't remember, no. Okay. All of these pipes, no matter what material, they mm-hmm. need to be bonded to your electrical system. And when people say gas line bonding, that means it's it's really simple concept. There is an electrical wire running from your gas line to your um, electrical uh, you know, that thing that keeps our house from getting electrocuted yeah. word I cannot think of right now, but yeah. you know what I'm talking mm-hmm, about. Mm-hmm. That stick in the ground. Yeah. Um, it needs to be connected. The gas line needs to be connected to that. Okay. Because if the gas line gets electrocuted for whatever reason, it can blow up because it's oh, gas. Well, yeah, it's Makes gas. Sense. Right. Yep. Uh, so all the pipes need to be bonded and, um, CSST in particular though is, has had quite a few issues, um and all cssst is it's not rigid tubing all your other gas pipes are going to be rigid tubing that i just said the black steel Mm -hmm. the pvc galvanized etc those are rigid tubes uh cssst is flexible yeah is it like yellow it is yellow it is it was invented by the japanese to protect from gas explosions during earthquakes, yeah. which makes a ton of sense when you think about it. What's more dangerous? The fact that your house could accidentally blow up or like a gas explosion during an earthquake. Yeah, that'd it, be horrible. Yes. <laughs> In an earthquake prone area like Japan, yeah, yeah. you know, San Francisco. Sense. Now we use CSST everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, just because it's flexible. It's just a better idea to have a flexible. Yeah, I've seen it. I know I've seen it before, like when I've gone out with Chris. Like, yes. Especially like outside on those outdoor yeah. stoves. And it has to grills. be bonded perfectly, though. That's the issue with CSST. If it's not bonded 100%, it is going to blow up. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's scary. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, then we have something called flex connectors. And flex connectors are what uh, connect your gas appliances to your gas piping. They can't go through walls, floors, or ceilings, and they cannot be concealed. The length is limited to three feet, except for uh, gas ranges and dryers, which can be six feet oh. for your flex connector. Yeah. Also, all of your gas um, appliances should have their own shutoff valve. That's just to turn it off. Yes. Same with the water. All water mm-hmm. appliances need to have their own water shutoff. You also need to have a main gas shutoff, just like you have a main water shutoff. Makes sense. Makes yep. Sense. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Now, oh, we don't need to watch a video on CSST. There are some common problems with gas lines that we see in houses, obviously leaks, mm-hmm. inappropriate material. So if you're using outdated gas lines or if you have galvanized, it's kind of degraded over time. Yeah. That can lead to leaks and fires. Inadequate support, rusting, no drip leg, missing shutoff valves, improper connection, plastics, pipes exposed above grade, Piping and chimney or duct systems. You never want your gas piping to run through your chimney or your duct work. Oh, it's no. It's a very bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, copper tubing not properly labeled because you can use copper for water and gas. You want to make sure that if it's used for gas that it's labeled as a gas line so people don't get you, confused. Yeah, yeah, think it's a plumbing line. Of course, uh, probably most important problem with gas lines is carbon monoxide. Mm-hmm. 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 And a lot of things, we've talked about this in our carbon monoxide episode, but I will go over it. Yeah. Just because I know you're... A little refresher. It's yes. been a minute. And then you can go back and listen to the episode. Yeah. A couple things can cause carbon monoxide. Can you name a few? Um, like, like a leak? Like, like or, well, what causes a oh, carbon monoxide? What, what, like what, what appliances? Um, your, your stove? Can your your stove? stove. That's one um, of them. Your stove. What else has gas in it? Um, can your dryer? Can your dryer can, ca- yeah, your dryer okay. can kill you. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Oh, uh, your water, can your water, water heater, heater can kill you? Oh, uh, your, your AC? A- HVAC system. Um, I forgot what else. <laughs> uh, so you said HVAC, water mm-hmm. heater, dryer, um, your grill, if you use the grill with yeah. the door down, but that's not really a gas appliance. Yeah. It's more um, just the grill. Yeah. Uh, your stove. Mm-hmm. Did you say stove? Yeah, I said you stove. stove. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your car, but that again, that's not an appliance. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Your fireplace. Oh, okay, okay. Your gas fireplace. Yeah. Um, and generators. Now, some people have mm-hmm. generators connected to their house. You have to make sure they're ventilated property, properly. 
every year, every time there's a hurricane, can't, pff, I can't talk today. Every time there's a hurricane, someone gets carbon monoxide poisoning. It's like yeah. a guarantee. When we had that freeze, quite a few people had died. That, I feel like that's monoxide. mostly because of the car thing. Yes. <laughs> and some people were cars. turning their oven on and like trying to heat their house with their oven, which is a really bad idea. Don't do that. Yeah, do not do that. Um, do not turn on your car with the garage door closed. <laughs> See, the thing is, when we turn our oven on, that gas is supposed to be ventilated. Mm -hmm. But what runs the ventilator? Your electricity. And there's no electricity. Well, if there's no electricity oh, okay. and you have all your windows closed and you've just been filling your house up with gas. Pretty much. Yeah, there's no ventilation. Yeah, there's yeah. no ventilation. So remember I said there's a difference between carbon monoxide and a gas yes, leak. Yes. Your carbon monoxide symptoms we mentioned are a lot more like insidious. They're going to be yeah. quieter. Yeah. You're going to feel worse and worse over time. You're not going to, it's not going to be as noticeable. I feel like not at first at the very end, you might feel like you have a bad flu or yeah. something. Um, and ultimately you'll just feel sleepy. Yeah. Gas leaks are a lot quicker. Like you, if this house was full of gas, you would probably walk in and start vomiting. I so mean, it's very, it like quick reaction wow. yeah if you walk into a house that's full of gas so you just inhale it so it's yes like, and your body has an instant like rejection <gasps> oh so you can God. like some people faint immediately or black out and that's how they die because they they get stuck in there they get stuck yeah. in there um because once the it's been tipped because remember we always have a mix of oxygen in the room yeah. so once all the oxygen has been taken out and replaced with gas then there's nothing to there's breathe. nothing to breathe <laughs> yeah so you can suffocate wow um, that's scary yeah so you can um headaches blacking out vomiting extreme nausea extreme dizziness wow yeah it's pretty quick like it's pretty intense like it's pretty would, intense you would know something's up <laughs> yes usually you can smell it as yeah. well you're gonna smell that gas sign oh my god did you tell me this or did someone else tell me this gas used to gas is odorless um i don't think it was me no okay i just learned this Gas is odorless, so that smell we smell is a chemical that the gas companies put in so we'll be able to know that there's a gas leak. Oh, Isn't I never that knew crazy? that. That's crazy. Yeah. Jesus. I wow. know. Here's our whole life. Today I learned. Yeah, like that, I thought that was just part of it. Like, yeah, I, I thought, thought gas had smell. smell. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Um, other things that might signal that there's a gas leak in the house, you might hear that shh. Oh, you can hear it. Yeah. Some people Kinda can like hear when it. You, heard, you turn yes. on the stove. You yeah, can that hear the sound. You can hear the gas. Yeah. Um, some people can hear it. I, obviously, I can't. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> some people, sometimes it'll come out in a color, like especially if you have um, a situation where it's an extreme leak, you might actually see like a fog or Something, a color. Yeah. Uh, obviously if your gas bill is really high, something's up, yeah. something's up and that, so sometimes you get a gas leak, not in your house, but on the side of your house where you're not inhaling it yeah, in, but it's aware. still, yeah, yeah, it's still leaking this house. No, my first house, I, when we moved in, I smelled it and Chris couldn't smell it. And I would only get a, a, like a whiff of it every once in a while, not all the time. Yeah. Like I'd be in my backyard with the dogs and I'd get like, Ooh, that smells like gas, but it would go away. And that happened for about a year, but tore it finally started like coming in totally. And Chris mm -hmm. finally smelled it and finally believed me that we had. Oh my God. Like our gas meter was leaking, but yeah. Um, also your plants will die. If oh. you have a gas leak in the house and even if it's not enough yet to hurt you, your plants are going to die first. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Like a canary, canary in a coal mine mm -hmm. type deal. So um oh we have a few more gas appliances okay. that we missed we said ovens yes dryers mm -hmm. fireplace water heater furnace outdoor grill if you have a grill connected to yeah. your house uh pool heater okay interesting um spa heater for like your jacuzzi tub mm -hmm. uh an outdoor fire pit because oh. some people have a fire pit yeah, on a gas and line it's like connected yeah, yeah. yeah interesting yeah so a couple more appliances than we originally thought what about propane Propane, yeah. Your best Hank Hill. Propane. I can't. Propane. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, I love that show. I love that show. I actually want to play a clip of him saying. Propane. Hank Hill saying. These are my administrative assistant nails there. Um, <laughs> the click clack. The clicky clack. Yeah, it's like that. You ever seen that episode of Family Guy where Peter's like a, <laughs> he and he's like, like, like the nails. giant nails? Yeah. Okay, here we go. I don't want to watch an ad. Oh, 
Mm-hmm. That's right, mm-hmm. Hank. You do. Propane and propane, propane accessories. and propane accessories. I appreciate that show so much more now that I live in Texas. <laughs> I used to honestly think that show was absurd. It's so funny. And like, then I lived. I moved to Texas. I was like, oh, okay. It all makes sense now. It wasn't a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not. It wasn't not. a joke. <laughs> um, okay. May Brittany Murphy rest in peace. Yeah. Um, what about propane? You know, you can heat your house with propane. You can use propane for everything. I didn't know that. Yeah. What you can't do is go to Lowe's and buy the and propane. Buy a propane tank. Yes, you need to get an industrial propane <laughs> okay. tank. Those need to be professionally installed and professionally connected. It is not a DIY project. Exactly. <laughs> Please don't DIY your propane tank. I mean, I guess some people do. Some people buy the industrial tank. Yeah. Um, Unless you are a professional yeah. and know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> yes, uh, because you don't want to hook it up wrong. Yeah. Not only for health and safety reasons, but because it's it's expensive. Yeah. To get propane coming in is very very expensive expensive yeah. um so it's a tank outside of the house sometimes it's buried sometimes it's in a shed uh and it'll have a little meter on it to tell you how much gas you have it'll it'll warn you when it's starting to get low and you have to get it filled every time it gets to like a red like usually quarter of a tank i think is when mm-hmm. it starts to tell you that okay you need to refill me uh people can use it for everything anything that's gas you can use propane wow. for yeah so all those appliances we discussed they can all be um, they can all use propane. Propane. I have a cousin who lives off the grid um, in Tennessee. So uh, she has well water and septic and propane. Mm-hmm. And they live in a very large house. They have a heated pool. They spend about 1500 a month in oh, propane. Yeah. yeah. That's insane. That is insane. I would ne- That's like a whole nother rinse. Yeah. And I will <laughs> admit they did not anticipate that when they. Oh, they didn't? They did not. No. Mistakes were made. Mistakes we're made. That's crazy. I'd be turning that pool heater off. Yeah, I'd be like, we're never using that. We're getting in the cold pool. <laughs> Get rid of the whole pool. Yeah. We're taking this out. Yep. That's <sighs> crazy. Phil, I t- and pools, by the way, are money pits. Please yeah, go back. already. Go to the pool episode. The do maintenance not, is crazy. Yeah. Okay. Do not think you're saving money on the Country Club membership by putting a pool in. No, you might as well go to the community pool. Honestly, yes. that's your that's the best bet. Buy go a pool pass. Pool, buy a pool pass. Buy an inflatable pool from the from Walmart. <laughs> like, anything but anything but that. Put your feet in the kiddie pool and sit mm-hmm. in a lawn chair. Exactly. It's it's all gonna be better than putting a pool in. Yeah. All right. What about inspections in the state of texas so gas lines and gas appliances are inspected by home inspectors in the state of texas it is in a new section we used to do i think i talked about this i can't remember we used to inspect gas kind of in each individual section Mm -hmm. we still do that but they've added a new section um in section four of plumbing subsection d is a whole section of gas lines and gas appliances are located in section five the appliance section the pool heater and spa and your fire pit etc that's going to be located in section six optional systems so gas is a little spread it's a little spread out a little spread out the main detail is going to be in that plumbing section subsection Mm -hmm. d which is the new section that they just added um Basically, in this new section, they're going to look for the location of the gas meter. Look, uh, they're going to identify what piping material. Mm-hmm. They're also going to look for gas leaks. They're going to look off for the shutoff valves, the main shutoff valve, and then all the gas appliances to have a shutoff valve. They're going to make sure that the tube's running through the wall correctly. If it's CSST, they're going to look for bonding. Yeah. They actually, they're going to look for bonding for any. Okay. But CSST is... Um, it's important. Especially important. Yeah. In fact, it, there's a note here that you, you have to look at CSST bonding most importantly. Okay. Uh, they're also going to look for that sediment trap that we yeah. talked about. Yeah. Make sure it's not filled. Make sure it's there. Make sure it's clean. Yeah, <laughs> etc. So pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, the big thing is uh, they don't pressurize or test the gas system. And they don't turn the gas valves on or off. Okay. So they're going to make sure you can turn it on and off, but they're not actually going to do it. Yeah. flip the switch. You're also not required to light pilot flames. This is mostly for the water heater. If the pilot flames out on the water heater, okay. not required to light it. That can actually be a fire hazard. Yeah. That's why they, they don't make them do that. So Makes sense. Yeah, pretty straightforward in Texas. Like I said, we have that whole new section now. We used to identify all those things, but just in different... Yeah, I feel like this is better because it is better. Like you don't got to look everywhere. (laughs) Yeah, but it's also still confusing because you're still identifying the gas in those different places. Yeah, it's kind of silly. I feel like it's not as 
spread out as before. But. Not as. In the state of Texas, gas lines are done by plumbers. Did you know that? There's no such thing as like a gas line guy. Yeah. I guess it makes sense because it's like piping yeah. kind of. So. Yeah. Now, bonding is done by electricians, though. Okay. So you kind of need two people. Um, in case of a gas leak, usually you need to call 311 or 911. And I think it... Most places use 311, right? Or 411. I think so. I believe so. But if you don't know, hey. You probably have a something 11 yeah. that's not 911. Check your local city or county for. Yeah. But most of the times it's 311. Yeah. So if you smell a gas leak um, and it's not an emergency, just call 311. Yeah. If but you, if it's an emergency. It's, then, call 911. Yeah. And they will respond because they, they do will. not. They don't care. Your house is burning down. They don't care. Gas leak. They'll come out really quickly because yeah. they take it super seriously. Yeah. You get robbed. Psh, good luck. Yeah. File a police report and maybe they'll do something. Did they ever do something with your police no, report? No. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> I think about that often. I'm yeah, like, I you were literally that. robbed on camera. I know. It was on and they camera. Like, didn't like, do anything. They stole my wallet on camera and I never even got a call back. <laughs> Slow clap. It's ridiculous. For HPD. <laughs> I know. Uh, and yet they're getting paid like, a billion more dollars than the fire department. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Good job. For that. <laughs> Good job, Mayor Turner. Um, all right. So let's, let's do averages, okay. averages, some averages. I don't really like doing money, but Just people make, always yeah, ask. You can get an, a little bit of an idea. Yeah. I mean, the best bet's always going to be like call and get a quote. Right. You know? So the cost of repair depends on if the damage is upstream. Oh, sorry. Not attack. <laughs> uh, gas leak obviously in here mm-hmm. um <laughs> oh my god have you seen the 30 rock episode where there's a gas leak no, and she starts seeing the little blue man no. and then she almost marries her jerk boyfriend no i haven't <laughs> and then jack donahy starts hallucinating jack donahy oh, like they start no. talking to he has like a good jack donahy mm-hmm. versus the did you watch mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. haven't watched oh. haven't seen it. very very funny show I'm going to have to look. I need more shows to watch. I've, I've come to like a slump lately. I'm like, I don't know what to watch. <laughs> First season's a little bumpy because they're getting their feet, but yeah. it's really funny. Tina Fey. Oh, is, I know Tina Fey. Is, yeah. yeah, she plays Liz Lemon. Okay. Yeah, and the Gas Leak episode is a classic. Ooh, I'll, I'll have to look into it. Um. Okay, so cost of repair depends on if the damage is upstream or downstream on the gas meter. Upstream is usually free because remember, that's the responsibility of the gas company. Yeah. Downstream, uh, re- Repair is averages about 200 to 800 or more. Cost to add a gas line averages three to eleven dollars per linear foot. So as you mentioned, it can be very expensive yeah. to add a gas line. And <clears throat> sorry, no, you're good. <laughs> <clears throat> My voice is going now. Mm-hmm. Cost to add gas appliances depend on the cost and size of the appliance being added. Yeah. So, got to go to Best Buy for that one. For sure. Yeah. So. I think that's it. I think so. I think that was a pretty good exploration of gas lines. Yeah, no, the the history was it was interesting. Yeah, interesting. not scary ish. Yeah, not as ba- not as bad as carbon monoxide. That, you can that still go scary. to sleep and not wake up. Yeah, but we already talked about that. Yeah, so we don't need to go, go listen to the carbon monoxide episode. Yeah, it's a good one. I I like that episode. It is really good, um, and it's something we all need to know about. I want to remind you, however, if you have all electric appliances, you don't need to worry about carbon yeah, monoxide. If, yeah, if you have all ele- electric appliances you can go to sleep tonight safely. as long as your car is not running yes just don't don't turn on your car with the garage door closed okay? yes make sure it's open and don't <laughs> i even have to remember that here i'm like let me make sure i don't get out of this exactly get out of this car first it's the push starts a lot of people have died from mm-hmm. the push starts which is why i was a total karen at the dealership and insisted on having keys key. yeah, yeah. Because I've left push chart cars on. When I had the Prius, I left it on all night. Thank God it was a Prius. Yeah. Oh, that's true. You know, yeah. it, it only gives off less than a quarter of the carbon yeah. monoxide. I mean, thank God it was a Prius, mm-hmm. right? Oh, I yeah. left it on all night. Um, it was really weird, though. By the time I figured out what was going on, I like, it was doing this thing where it was like, actually moving back and forth it was like uh, possessed oh my god i know <laughs> who is driving my car <laughs> i know i was like really scared to drive it and i had to take it into the dealership because there was like big warning signs yeah. flashing everywhere but later that prius was destroyed yeah very no, soon afterwards I, that I prius know. was destroyed mary went through a lot with that prius. yeah i, I will remember, never own another I prius <laughs> <laughs> i remember those times i will never ever own another prius um 
I mean, it wasn't the Prius's fault it was destroyed, but I also hated it. So yes, I was kind of glad just, it was destroyed. It was just yeah, <laughs> it was just, just garbage. It was a piece of plastic around an explosive battery. That's yeah. all it was. Anyway, <laughs> that was a digression. Yeah. So if you have all electric, it's your car, your grill, and a generator. Those are the three things. But your appliances are not going to hurt you. Yes. You'll be hopefully. Okay. Yeah, hopefully. As far as we know right now. They might become set in it, for all we know. (laughs) know. Mm Self-aware. Okay, credits. Yes. Intro credit is the backstory, the New London, Texas gas explosion of 1937, which, by the way, was very sad. That is very sad. That is very sad. This is random. Do you remember when that explosion happened? Yes. That that, that other gas explosion? Yes. That was like a few years ago. Tuna fell. (laughs) Yeah, my old roommate felt it. That was like 10 miles from this house. Yeah. I think we've talked about it a few times. Yeah, I think we did. It was close to here. It was big. It blew out people's windows and doors. And um, we weren't here, but I guess it was really. Yeah. It was when we were in New Orleans. Mm Mm-hmm. It was right before COVID started. Yes, it was. It was. Like three weeks before the world ended. Yeah. That was a warning sign. It was a good the Lord gas- trying to tell us to hang on like, because it's about you, to be a wild you ride. This, you thought this was bad. Like, <laughs> oh, you think all 2020 is going to give you is gas explosions, huh? Oh, no. <clears throat> oh, no. It's going to end yeah. with a war in Ukraine. <laughs> and it somehow just keeps getting worse. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes it does. Remember when a pandemic was our biggest problem? I know. A good old days. Life is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Life is crazy. <clears throat> now we got the monkey pox. Uh huh. All right. Uh, music credit is Kevin McLeod with Incom Tech. The source credit is the American Public Gas Association, Triple Pundit, and the Library of Congress. Check us out on YouTube at A Action Home Inspection Group Houston, on Facebook, on Instagram at Home Inspector underscore Texas, and on TikTok at Houston Home Inspector. Our next topic, I'm actually really excited about this, are trailers, mobile homes, and tiny homes. Ooh, Ooh tiny homes. I'm so excited. <laughs> I would cute. love to live in a tiny home. They're so cute. They're they so are. cute. And some Let's of them cleaning. are actually, yeah. <coughs> I'm literally choking to death on it's nothing. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> some of them are so nice. But I need to end this podcast because yeah, I can't yeah, talk. I, I don't think Mary can speak anymore. <laughs> I'm literally choking. All right. <laughs> this is Mary. And I'm Missy. And we're the home girls. And we will chat with you next time, hopefully not choking. Yes. About trailers and tiny homes. Yes, it's gonna be good. Yes, it's gonna be good. <laughs>